In 2022, we bought our dream property in central Portugal, a 57 acre homestead on the side of a mountain. Lush forest, birdsong, wildlife, and a peaceful calm made us fall in love with the place. Unfortunately, before we moved in, a gigantic wildfire swept through, destroying 28,000 hectares of the surrounding landscape. Stunning, unique forest areas in Portugal's oldest and largest protected area. We lost an incredible amount of infrastructure already built there. Thankfully, the house still stood, as did all others in the area, and there were no casualties. A true testament to the firefighters who risk their lives each year to control these unfortunate incidents. Here's everything we've done in the past eight months on Miracle Mountain. The first step was to clear up. Dead trees, fallen branches and debris meant access was tough. The property has been left without anyone living on it for a number of years before we bought it, meaning trees had overgrown and dirt tracks into the forest were completely impassable. Weeds, bushes and even trees had taken root and even though the fire had raged through, they still needed removing. It was a necessary task to allow us access into the forest via vehicle. It's a big task to take on alone, so we hired a team for a couple of days to help clear large amounts of trails through the forest. So I've asked the guys to cut the debris down into manageable sizes, so I've got piles that I can chip, but also, as you can see here, I've got piles and piles of firewood ready to go. I didn't even know this trail was here, so we're cleaning all of this trail and you can see the carnage behind me. There is a lot of branches. I am not going to go short of firewood, but I see a lot of chipping on the horizon. And now it's clear. It makes life so much easier for walking and for driving. It's still a little bit tight for driving. I do need to clear all of the debris that's been piled up along the side of the road, but I will get there in the end. Things just take time, you know. The gates are metal and they still are intact and per perfectly fine, so it's just really useful. So I open this gate and continue up into the forest and this trail is gorgeous and it loops back round to the other side of the house. I'm out of breath. I'll be the one to give you rest. I'll be here for you. I'll be here for you. I'll carry you through heartache and trouble. We invested in a heavy duty wood chipper to get through the massive amount of wood we'd be cutting through. Not all of it is suitable for firewood and wood chips are great for a variety of things. Shortly after the fire came extreme rainfall, resulting in flash floods across the area and our homestead. Silt, stone and dirt was washed off the mountainside, causing even more damage for us to work through. At the bottom of our property, the last terrace took the brunt of the wash off. The entire area was transformed into a destruction zone and we had our work cut out. Drainage systems built many years ago by the previous owner were blocked and damaged from the fire and flooding. Huge stones and debris were stuck, causing the water to take the path of least resistance. This was evident across the entire 57 acres, as roads were washed out and even worse, the spring-fed water system to the house was destroyed. 
With our digger, Theo made great progress. With the excavator, to then move all of the silt and stone that I dug out of the valley and put it down here, grade it and complete this road. It's looking so much better. You can now drive over it nicely that you couldn't before. Look how far down Theo's had to dig. It was all completely buried. It was literally ground level. It's unbelievable and he managed to find the pipe. <laughs> Next project that I'm working on with the excavator is to find the pipe that runs under this road and I found it. It's about three feet underground. The other one was a little bit lower, about four and a half feet. So this one wasn't so bad, but you can see all of this silt, sand and stone. This is all washed down from the mountainside when we had the flooding after the wildfire. So you can see just here by the pile of dirt and silt and stone how much I've had to remove out of here. I'd say that's about five foot high. Connected it onto where it was before all the way along. I need to get in there with the hand shovel and just clean out the actual pipe because it's filled with small stones. But that is a good job. It is ready to go and it's already wet down the further end. So once we get the next rain, that will all come down there and over time it will bed down and become nice and solid. Thanks to Squarespace, making your own website has never been easier. With ridiculously wonderful, customizable templates crafted by their world-class design team, which support all major content types, including pages, galleries, blogs, commerce, calendars, and more. Their groundbreaking drag and drop editor gives you total control of your website design and pre-designed structures make your page building a breeze with pre-built layouts. Specific purposes such as contact, about, blog, portfolio and more are ready made and arranged to quickly create professional layouts and showcase your content. Being able to integrate video blocks from our YouTube channel directly onto our website allows us to keep our website style while sharing our videos from an external platform. This is especially helpful for blog posts that reference the videos, giving readers a more in-depth look at the topic. With a snazzy looking website, you're also going to want a smart logo and Squarespace has you covered. The browser based design tool is easy to use and has an array of icons to choose from. You can change the font, the color and so much more. So why not build your very own website with Squarespace today by clicking the link in our bio for a two week free trial. And we've got a fantastic 10% discount for you to use with the code Indie Projects with your first purchase of a website or a domain. I've come further up to the side of the mountain and obviously there's all the damage from the fire but the damage from the flood it's just there's so much work to be done now so this is usually a big concrete bowl where the water gets held in a pool just on that plateau over there you can see here all of the reeds that have been swept away from the pool 
So there's a big pool up here and you can see all of this mud and sand and silt. There's massive branches that have been swept down the mountainside. Over here, this pipe is the overflow to the pool. But unfortunately, there's no pool left here. I can literally walk on top of what was a big pool of water. So again, some way or another, I'm gonna have to try and get a digger up here to dig this all out. I made it. Where the pond once was needed a lot of clearance. The first step was to clear out the overflow pipe as even though the pond was filled in with silt, the spring was still flowing through the silt. There's so many roots holding this mud together. It's quite difficult to get out, but I'm getting there slowly but surely. We cleared the area to ready it for digging out with an excavator. I've just uh, put a plant in the back, a tree branch, and it was a Jumanji tree branch. It flicked back, and, but it was covered in these like little cactusy kind of thorns and smacked me in the face. And Theo had to pull all of the thorns out of my face and now it's super itchy. It took three days for the digger to remove all of the silt that had filled in the pond that once sat there. The bucket is absolutely ginormous on this thing and you can see the shape of the pond coming together already. It's all really exciting. Everything that's been taken from here is going into fixing the road. All of this that you can see right now, you couldn't walk on. It was great big crevices. that had been completely washed out. And this silt is perfect for filling the road because it's really wet so it compacts really nicely and obviously he's got such a heavy machine he can drive backwards and forwards over it and it's just looking so much better you can see the bit that he hasn't got to yet look at the size of them crevices that are being filled and now it's a fully functional road really cool
this really doesn't feel like the same track I actually can't quite believe it and I th yeah here we are we're just coming up to the pond it's going to be on the left hand side here so we need to put the gate back in place but there's the pond on the left this track is so perfect now it's amazing <laughs> it's so gloriously peaceful up here this pond is now home to two different species of newts and there's actually quite a lot of them in here tons of frogs and 25 goldfish of two different varieties they're cold water goldfish they're perfect for this pond and they're loving life <laughs> because a little breeze just came up it just blew all of that food with the wind. he worked with the wind <laughs> can we just take a moment and appreciate how nice this pond is Getting the pond back was a huge step for us, as not only does it hold water, but it slows down the flow of rainfall and provides a space for wildlife. Just above the pond was the infrastructure for water to the house, which unsurprisingly was also damaged in the fire and the flood. So you can see here the fire damage and they're all warped and burnt. This one is still holding a little bit of water to a certain point but then there's a big hole that's been melted further up. So they're just gonna be useless for most things, but I might be able to reuse them and take them back down the mountain for maybe the water for our goats and rainwater harvesting off of the goat shed and stuff like that. Because of the flood, you can see we've had all sorts of small landslides. So here you can see all of the root systems of the trees and this has just been washed away so we need sorting in due course but down here is our source of the spring lovely clean drinking spring water so i'm at the source of where the spring is and as you can see behind me the amount of damage that actually happened during the flood. You can see there's been a pretty big landslide and all of the earth and the stones that were there supporting that area have just completely washed downstream. This has been washed away in the flood. So you can see here, this is just freestanding. This has got no support whatsoever. And what I'm worried about, it could cause this whole system to completely collapse and then we'd be in real trouble because then I have to completely rebuild the source of the spring. The entire piping system needed replacing, which meant battling through the washed out stream and steep inclines of the forest to remove burned and broken piping systems, as well as three 2,000 litre water tanks. It's harder and harder each one. <laughs> than you thought it was. <laughs> Even the pipes are heavy. Maybe you just roll me. <laughs> Yeah. 
two, one. There we go. So more rainfall, didn't you say, in the last 100 days than they usually get in the whole year. Yeah, that's wild, isn't yeah. it? You can see, that's the new one. I need to pick up some more valves and some right angle pieces. A lot of these can't be reused. You can see in the fire, that's just completely melted. That's unusable. So I think if we start fresh, it's the best way to go and they're gonna last so, so long. So it makes sense that this goes onto here and it's just been ripped off. That makes sense. Which is crazy because it's threaded. And there's a filter, the other side of that pipe. So all of the water is completely filtered before it even goes into the tank. And then we have a secondary filter at the house. The infrastructure of this place was designed it, amazingly. It blows my mind what they did with this place and it's it's up to us to make it better. <laughs> There's all of this tarp and everything all over the floor. It's been burnt. We don't need to cover our tanks in tarp because the tank is blue, which means it stops any algae growth and it's specifically designed for drinking water. I've got a straight join and this is going to join from the original pipe that comes all the way from the house that is buried underground. That is why we believe that the pipe is actually fine because it was buried underground and you can do so further down because when they built this property a lot of these trees wasn't here so there was no root systems and stuff like that. I can hear it coming into the tank. Yeah! Woo! Do you think this is going to be a little dribble? I don't know. Ooh. Oh, it's coming! It's coming! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> As we already had goats and chickens on our other property, it meant we had to prepare areas for them to live in before we could all move over together. Tempe chicken coop, here we come. Let's see how this goes. He has a strong ass root. Oi, there we go. That was so satisfying. Look at his face. <laughs> These sheets are perfect for cladding the temporary chicken coop. And then we'll build it to the size of one sheet of this so we have minimal cutting to do. are just through here in this magical glade 
very happy, enjoying life in their new surroundings. Look at this, we've got some clearing up to do after we did the building, but here they are. Look at my babies. Hey guys. <laughs> We put some temporary roosts in that look a little bit mad right now, but they really enjoy them. They actually tried to sleep on this last night, but I wanted them to be inside and get used to their new coop, which they seem to be. Hello. Having the chicken coop done was the signal for us and the animals to all move over to Miracle Mountain, which we could now do once water was flowing to the house, forest tracks were accessible and us and the animals had safe places to sleep. And they're absolutely loving it, their horse box there which they sleep in at night and get shelter from the rain and they're not morning people or morning goats as I keep saying <laughs> so most of them are just lying down at the moment absolutely chilling they've only stood up because we've come over <laughs> exactly they've only stood up because we've come over and there's tons of weeds and grass in this huge field and when they first arrived here on Miracle Mountain they were literally like galloping around in joy <laughs> They, yeah, they were just, they had grass sticking out of their mouths and weeds and whatnot. They are loving it and we can graze them in so many different areas. We've got just a huge amount of space here. Moving from our tiny home was bittersweet as we'd grown so much there, but also we were happy to start a new chapter in our lives. Probably one of the most exciting tasks we worked on during this time was the workshop, a space we'd both been dreaming of for years. The garage on the property came full of the previous owner's discarded belongings, so we had a big clean up to do first. Welcome to the garage area. I'm gonna do a full renovation. It's gonna be a garage slash workshop and it's plenty big enough. It's about eight meters by five meters. So I got plenty of space to play with.
I'm trying to just get the energy up to lift this beam. I'm kind of dreading it. It's going to be easy, isn't it? Of course. It's going to be easy. I'm actually quite excited to give you guys an updated tour of the workshop because I've not shown you in here for a little while and it's looking very different, I think. Much tidier, even though there is a lot of stuff in here and it is still a mess and things still need sorting. And I have fitted here on the window a nice blind. So in the summer, that's going to really help keep the place a little bit cooler. One of my favorite areas. And this is how the whole workshop's gonna be eventually. So this will give you an idea of what it will look like. And it really is a dream come true to have this space to work out of, to store my tools, the tractors in here. Everything's out of the sun, the rain, and it means that things are gonna last longer. I've now got a workbench, so I can come here and fix stuff much easily. Before I was trying to fix stuff on the grass, on the ground and you end up losing things and not putting things back in the place where they're meant to go. I've actually stored quite a lot of stuff on the mezzanine, you can't even see it. And that is why I created this mezzanine because it just adds a whole another story of storage space to keep the main workshop clear. And now you can see the workbench. I don't think I've shown you the workbench on the channel yet because I only really just finished it. Let me tell you guys, basically this is about three and a half meters, this workbench here, by four meters by two meters. So I've got plenty of workspace. I want pillar drills and sanders and all worktop stuff to be in particular areas. All of this over here is just me going through all of the screws, labeling them up and putting them in these really nice cabinets so everything has its place and I know where it is maybe as well i'll put some storage under there but at the moment i think the worktop is enough for now and there we have it these are some of our highlights of what we've done on our forest homestead in the past eight months recovering from fire and flooding as well as battling mental health struggles and everything else life has thrown at us in between you can watch from the very beginning by clicking the Miracle Mountain playlist and if you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up, feel free to share it and maybe even subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video.